So getting into volume 12 of Slime, the light novel series, it's actually kind of funny because I read this volume quite a long time ago, I wouldn't, by, by a couple, a long time ago, a couple of years ago, and I never actually did a review on it, I kind of just ended up disappearing off the series, I had a lot of things going on, and actually rereading this is quite interesting, and especially with season 3 currently airing, there's a lot of interesting thoughts that have been kind of going through my head because of how season three has begun and a lot of the discussions over what people call table talking and re reading this volume actually really made me think more about what makes slime good and where the differences between the anime and the light novel is and not in the conventional sense of cut content but how the series is presented in a reading format to an anime format and so to give context to that and this is kind of the thing that made me think about this volume because there is a lot of discussions in this volume there's a lot of table talking a lot of strategy meetings and as i was reading through it i was kind of realizing what makes the light novel series so good and it's that when you're reading something you visualize it in your own head your brain is able to create unless individuals can't definitely tell me in the comment section down below but for me personally when I read the series, I visualize all the things that they're talking about. Say, for example, they're talking about an old fight rear Veldera, and that's something that gets talked about in the later parts of the volume. Veldera and the kind of disasters that he brought. His seems to be there's a character that's very close to Veldera at the end, and it obviously seems like his sister is that character. And I just, again, yeah. So he's having this discussion gets brought up about him having these travesties, this conflict, them taking him out and everything. And as they're talking about that, I visualize it in my head. I'm visualizing the conflict. I'm visualizing Veldera doing all these things. But in the anime, it doesn't really do that. It doesn't visualize all the things being discussed. It's just individuals in a room at a table talking. And it feels more like a visual novel when you look at the anime format when they're doing the table talking. But in the light novels, I'm creating all these visual spectacles in my head. And that's the thing about reading light novels. And I've said this in multi multiple different light novel series is that sometimes less is more in that the sense of because it's presented in a text format with no images, your brain is able to create all these scenarios. And that's what's really great about it. It doesn't over exposition dump every little detail but it does go into a lot of the stuff that's like okay this is what Velda has done this is what yuki's plans are this is the political back and forth between the big juggernaut powerhouse that is about to attack rimi and his little new little kingdom that he's built up and this whole conflict building up bit by bit by bit by bit in this volume and the confrontation that is about to present and certain people wanting this fight to happen, certain people not wanting this fight to happen, the plans that they have for when the fight's going to happen, like our boy Remy, he's got this whole strategy meeting planned out, everything going on, trying to get as much intel as possible, but also this whole plan of like, okay, instead of having the whole city destroyed again, or town, whatever you want to call it, I call it a city at this point, because of how vast and big it is, they can bring it all down into the dungeon and just basically like teleport in a sense. And so you've got all this visualization of their plans. Everything is just, in my brain, I'm just thinking of how they're doing this. Like, oh, the dungeon, all these multiple floors. And there is definitely some, like, action-y type stuff that happens in this volume, especially when you've got those spies coming in and they're trying to get through the volumes, get down to as far as they can to find where these hidden locations are. And as they're doing it, they're really enjoying themselves. They're having fun. They're making money. They're making a name for themselves. And they're just kind of like, yeah, we, we kind of like it here. We really... We really don't want this conflict and then you've also got the old geezer as well and he ends up getting betrayed by you I, he doesn't specify who it is it's yuki I'm, I'm i can guess a lot of things slime's pretty predictable with the story in my opinion and that's not a bad thing by the way i feel like some slime fans take everything as an insult or some personal grudge and that's the thing about me discussing about this i'm not saying the anime is bad by it having six episodes of visual novel just text talking but you've also got to understand that some people don't really quite enjoy that and again slime season one was a lot of action it had a lot of stuff going on and it, it yeah it had some table talking but nowhere near to the amount that season three has and season two has so i just want to point that out that there is differences between seasons one two and three 
And that's the thing. I noticed that a lot of anime-only fans like Seasons 1 more than 2 and 3, but a lot of light novel fans like Season 3 the most, and then Season 2, and then 1. And it might not be for everyone, so I'm sure someone in the comments will go, well, actually, I think this, and I talk for the whole community. Again, I read a lot of my comments, so I see a lot of different people's opinions, and I've seen a general consensus that a lot of light novel fans like Season 3 more, while a lot of anime-only fans like Season 1 more. Again, if your opinion's different, I'd like to know it, but again, you can only speak for yourself. I can only go based on what I've read, based on the consensus of my comment section. Maybe the community is different somewhere else. But you go into this volume, and it's really great. It goes into Yuki's backstory, who he is, what drives him, his genius mindset. Though I do think, personally, in my opinion, he's very egotistic. And he's kind of got these grander ideas, and I feel like he's kind of steered away from what his overall vision has become. Like, he wants to do all these good things, but I feel like also he's kind of just become very ruthless. And I mean, I guess maybe that is just part of him. He's very ruthless in trying to achieve the greater good that he envisions, but I also see that as kind of corrupt good in a sense like you're trying to create a world in your vision but is it really the best vision is it what everyone else wants or is it just what you think is best because what you think is best might seem great in your mind but in the grand scheme of things it might not really benefit everyone and to me it does feel like yuki's got a lot of ideas of grandeur and making things a better place but really it feels like he's more fulfilling his own desires that he's got because of his past and some of the instances that have happened, well, that uh, travesties that have happened in his past life, and now he's got that opportunity to try and fulfill those fantasies, he's going about them. But he's, again, he's not exactly got honor or anything. He's willing to backstab someone. He's willing to play as dirty as possible, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But if you're also going to sit there and talk about all these grander ideas of trying to make a world a better place... Mm, I don't know, just for me, I know I'm going to get hate for saying it, I just think Yugi's got a bit of an ego. But at the same time, it makes him a really compelling and interesting villain to the story as well. And the conflict between Rimuru, or Rimi, as I like to call him, and Yuki, I think is really great, because I think they both have good intentions, but they're both going about it very differently. And so seeing how that plays out in the long term, oh... It's, it's going to be fun. Really, 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 really fun. And then you've also got Guy as well. Him sort of playing the chessboard as metaphorically saying. And that does also apply to this big ruler dude that's kind of hiding in the shadow. And is planning to attack Rimuru's kingdom. And you've clearly got this other chick that knows Veldra. That's why I just kind of think it's his sister. I can't remember if it actually says it in there or not. Maybe it does. I just, I just, I, I don't know. I've read this twice, so I feel like I've, I've gone over things that I'm like, oh, do I remember this from reading it or not? So I just, something told me that it's his sister. I don't know why, but maybe it's in the light novels, maybe it's not. Maybe I read it somewhere. The thing that interests me the most is how this is all going to play out, because they seem to be gunning for Veldra. Veldra seems to be their ace in the hole, in this whole idea of like, they, they underestimate Rumoru's power. Like, they think Rimuru is super, 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 super weak, and that he's just got an ego, he's, like, got a big ego in his head, like, he's gotten too big for his own boots because he's enslaved Veldra as they kind of see it, or persuade him, or something like that, and so they're going, okay, well, if we can get Rimuru, well, we can knock Veldra out, then everything's easy, because they see him as the greater, the greater threat, which I just think is fascinating, because I do think they're really underestimating the power that Rimuru has, but at the same time, Rimuru's in a discussion talking about his enemies, and he's like, oh yeah, they've got tanks, floating aircrafts, and he's just like, all we've got is bloody trains. Where's our technological advancements? And so he feels like he's like many, 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 many steps behind. I am very curious about that, because I do feel like if he does win this conflict, there's going to be a massive boom of technology, because Rimuru is going to try and push all those kinds of technology, especially the flying crafts, like, that's pretty crazy. And they've even got guns as well, like, magic guns. That's pretty cool. So, uh, still, I think trains is pretty impactful. 
And I mean, I, I know some other isekai animes that have trains in it, like techno, like trains where you could have like, maybe like, uh, air, like cannons on them. So you could have them like into positions, get like can iron cannon style things and just fire out. That could be kind of useful if Rimuru kind of maybe retrofitted the trains kind of system. But, oh, the amount of technological advancements they're making, I was just kind of thinking to myself, all the crazy things they could do. If, if they were good at like mining and stuff, the dwarves maybe they could make underground tunnels with trains that would be pretty crazy because then you could get logistics from to and from okay that would be a massive technological advancement i mean nothing surprises me because i mean they've got flying aircrafts they've got tanks they've got trains they've got magical guns they've got walkway paths that have special crystals that deter monsters that have little pathways and little inns everywhere like the technology advancements are massive and it's fun and interesting to see where they'll take it next but there's also the whole angel thing as well that keeps getting brought up and the whole like oh if they get too advanced the angels are going to come and attack so that's the one funny thing about slime is they keep bringing that up but it hasn't actually transpired yet and that's clearly why a guy tries to keep everything kind of down in the low keeps everyone weak and everything so something doesn't happen in the long term so very curious about where these future volumes go again if you do like this kind of content you do want more slime light light novel reviews slash analysis then support the videos because light novel content doesn't do super well on the channel and people keep demanding it but if people want it well things like a like a comment a share those things help a lot to make the videos do better because if they don't do well well that indicates to me that people aren't interested in them but then when I don't do them, people whinge, oh, well, why aren't you doing more Slime Light novel reviews? And it's like, well, no one's watching them. So it's just kind of a thing like that. But overall, I'm very fascinated to see where this goes. There's some interesting portrayal, some interesting strategy meetings. And when reading it, as I mentioned before, it brings up a lot of thoughts about the whole concept of the difference between the anime and the light novel and why some people go into the anime thinking that it's, you know more of a visual spectacle i don't like the argument of people being like oh all you're into is mindless action it's like if that is your argument you've instantly lost the debate with me because at that point you're going into it in bad faith you're just being childish a lot of people do want to see things you look at Feyran. that is a massive world builder type series but it shows a lot of visual stuff it shows all the world while slime is a lot of politics and i'm not saying that's a bad thing and this is the problem slime fans are getting too defensive it's not a bad thing it's just one of those where i think some people go into slime thinking it's a lot of visual spectacle like civilization building and then they get to the board meetings and all the table talk and then they go ah oh, well this is boring and they they want more they don't mind the talking they just want some of the visual stuff as well they want to see stuff not just hear stuff if you get my drift which is why i think the light novel works so much better in my mind because in my mind i visualize it when i read it i, I visualize it in my brain it's like oh we're making floating aircrafts and i visualize it in my head they say tanks i visualize it in my head and you can say well why not do the same with the anime but the problem is is you've got a still shot background or a basic background while they're talking your brain has already filled in that visualization with what's in front of it but if you're reading you've got nothing visual you're a you're you're there to fill in that gap and that's just how i see i'm trying to understand both perspectives sides of the argument when it comes to those that like the light novels those that like the anime and the ups and the downs i'm trying to understand where everyone's coming from when it comes to reviewing and analyzing it so don't take it as a personal insult i'm again just voicing what i'm seeing and how i'm also experiencing the light novel series because i enjoy all these discussions all these well building i write down notes and all that kind of stuff with like anti-skills the guns the tanks the trains the floating aircraft i keep bringing those out they're so cool like god imagine seeing that in an anime format that'd be pretty cool so you see all that you see all those words there and you can visualize it in your own head so i think it's very helpful again looking forward to seeing where this goes and once the conflict starts where it all plays out because they've clearly strategized all the all the soldiers how they're going to defend how they're going to retaliate all those kinds of things and 
very excited. So again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.